Kaylin, we, we haven't uh, talked to you since the final play. And can you take us through you dribbling, drawing three defenders, passing to Marcus, what you were thinking and what your reaction was to the, to the shot? Just some good basketball. That's all it was. Um, it's an exciting game. Um, and we found a way to win at the end. You know, it definitely was close, a lot closer than we would like it to be. But um, winning a playoff game is is not taken for granted. It's not easy to do in this league. Um, and against a team like that, with, with players as experienced as that on the other side, uh, we'll take it. Physically, uh, being an afternoon game, how did you how did you come out of it? Uh, going through what you're observing, how did you come out? Yeah, I mean, uh, we ain't we haven't played in a in a week um, to that first game, so you know, just had to shake, knock some of the rust off. We had some bunch of early turnovers, bunch of plays that we we usually get score on. Um, the, the connection was uh, taking a little bit, but you know, we still played well down the stretch, played solid, and then we found a way to win in the end. The basket before the winner, when you just kind of went unimpeded to the hoop, what were you looking at there? Because people, a lot of people said that was the key to, to the comeback was just getting that quick hoop after the timeout. Well, uh, we called the play for for Jason, and I think they anticipated that. And the big was um, KD top locked him, and he's one of their rim protectors. And then the big was out guarding as well. That's the other rim protector. Once I saw them two not at the rim, I was like, man, I got a pretty good shot. I'm scoring the ball right here. Nobody's at the basket. And they, uh, I just be, just was being aggressive and, and, and scored a quick two. Um, got back on defense, set our feet, got a stop, and the rest was history. Jalen, you were leaking pretty good there late in the game. What, what exactly were you feeling? And did you get the chance to express to anybody that you weren't going to be coming out of the game? Uh, yeah, I got hit a, a couple times in the face. Um, you know, that's playoff basketball. Ain't nothing else to, 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 uh, to chalk it up to is other than that. You know, that's what comes with the game at times. You know, some of the plays, you know, you would like to see, you know, them get called. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's, it's war out there. You know, it's survival of the fittest. You get hit, you get back up. You know, if the rep see it, he see it. If he don't, I ain't going to lay there. You know, I got to keep playing. I got to get it, uh, get up and move on to the next play. So, you know, um, got hit a couple times. Got a pretty uh, good bruise across my nose. It was – my nose was probably bleeding that night every, like, 45 minutes. Like, it just kept kept going, kept going. Just, But that's a part of the game. That's what I love about basketball, you know. You know, it's everything, not just the good things, the bad things come with it too. So that's what I signed up for. I think you may use, use the term after the game of that, that final play was a microcosm of, of your season. Maybe how reflective do you feel that play is of, of the change you guys have made in the last, you know, three and a half months? Just, you can see the trust. There was a lot of trust there. And maybe early in the season, you know, as we're trying to figure out new coaching staff, new players, new environment, you know, some of that trust wasn't all the way there yet, everything was kind of new. And now you can see like we're all trusting one another and that's very important um, to a team is, is trust, knowing somebody got your back. And that's something that we've developed over the season to, to building that chemistry, building that trust that even if you make a mistake, your teammate's gonna be there to have your back. That trust so important on the defensive end as well. What was it like um, celebrating with Marcus yesterday? Oh, amazing, man. Um, no, I can't be more proud and more happy uh, for Marcus Smart, man. He's been guarding his butt off since he's been in this league, and now he, start, he got the acknowledgement um, and things like that. Uh, it's great to, to celebrate the teammate uh, for all the hard work, all the effort you watch him put in from day one. And I've learned so much from Marcus, how to compete and everything. Um, on that side of the ball, you know, how he changes the game, it, it, it says a lot for him to be the, the first guard since Gary Payton. That's, that's, that's legendary. Um, so, you know, Marcus just submitted his name as one of the defensive greats, which we all knew. Uh, but now it's sketched in stone. I think that's it's pretty exciting. And so we couldn't be more proud of him. We got to celebrate him yesterday at practice. So, you know, 
I, I ain't seen him smile like that in a while. So uh, that was pretty nice. This is a reflection of the team as well, though. Do you take pride in that? Absolutely. You know, you know, individual accolades come from team success uh, more so than not. So as a team, we've been great defensively all year. You know, it could have been Rob, could have been Al, could have been JT. Um, all of those guys could be in, you know, contention for first team, second team, or whatever. We've been guarding all year. Um, so um, we celebrate our brother's success, but um, defensively, that's where we all, you know, know that we got to hang our hat. Jalen, you know, losing the 15 point lead there, you guys were in that spot a lot this year and you lost a lot of games like that. What kind of things are you saying to each other? You know, you know, what's really the moment there that you put that to a stop to collapse there in the fourth? Yeah, um, they started out hot. I think it was like a 15 to two run. I mean, we're coming back to the timeout and everybody was starting to get a little quiet. And I, and I, I, I said to everybody, like, this is the moment where our faith needs to be the strongest. You know, like, we're going to find a way to win this game. Uh, we're going to find a way to get our offense going. Just stick with it. You know, this ain't the time to, to, to fold to adversity. It's time to, to turn it up a notch. And we found a way to pull it out. Yeah, when you mentioned that you had a little trouble sleeping and Ime kind of mentioned after the game, uh, it, it, it might have been a little jittery. Did you, did you kind of feel that going, at, going right from tip off or, or how did you feel at the beginning of the game? Yeah, I mean, we haven't, we hadn't played in a, in a little bit. And then also like just playoffs, I think is, I saw somebody sent to me, it's been like 500 plus days since I played in the playoff game. And playoffs is for me, that's, I mean, basketball in general, I love, but it's just something about the playoff really like gets me going, you know? So I haven't played in the playoff game in like two years or something like that, 500 plus days. It was, um, yeah, you could say I had a lot of um, pregame um, excitement, jitters. I had to calm myself down a little bit. It seemed like you just kept attacking, especially in the second half. It, was that just kind of you settling into the game there? Yeah, second half, I kind of felt more comfortable, started to settle in. Um, then I took some shots to the nose and the face, and I couldn't breathe for a little bit with the plugs in my nose. And um, But I definitely started to settle in a little bit more in the second half. We have a Zoom question here from Barbara Barker at Newsday. Uh, yes. Um, were you aware of the back and forth between Kyrie and the fans? And what do you think about how he uses them to get him going? Um, I was not aware. You know, I'm focused on all my energy is on our team and what we got to do um, to win games. You know, I wasn't focused on anything else, um, to be honest. Um, and that's all I'm focused on now. Yeah, what kind of things do you need to improve on for game two? Because obviously it's a game that you won and you're confident in that, but obviously left some plays and points on the floor. You know, what, what do you need to work on? Personally, uh, just being more aggressive, get more involved. I don't think I was involved enough in that game. That's something that um, I'm looking forward to doing in the game two. Um, game uh, also just continuing to take care of the ball, find open teammates, but on defense, continuing to be aggressive, play without fouling. We expect those guys to come out and be even more aggressive um, this next game. So, you know, we don't want to put it into the officials' hands um, and start to, to bail us out and bail, them, bail those guys out because we expect those guys to try to get calls and try to take away our physicality. We just got to be disciplined, be sound, but, and everything will take care of itself. How tough is it to play in a playoff game when you, one of your nose is literally plugged? I mean, yeah. you got to try to breathe, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the that was the part. Like you running up and down the court. At one point, I had both of my um, nose plugged in. I couldn't breathe, you know. So, um, but that's like I said before. That's playoff basketball. That's what you sign up for. I mean, if I had to do it all again for that same ending, like I'll do it all again, you know. So, um, finding ways to win, playing through toughness, adversity, playing through, you know, injuries, whatever it takes. Um, you got to leave it all on the floor. And, and that's what I plan to do. Wrap it up right there. Thank you, Jalen. Appreciate you. Gosh.